My mission is to spread my music all throughout the Gala region, and nobody, not even that stupid Piers, is going to stop me. Well, for starters, we're gonna need to start off with a drummer in order to help our future musicians maintain a steady beat. So Grookey is gonna be our obvious choice. But we need some more musicians for this band to really kick off, so we actually had a Zigzagoon audition and he made the cut. And before you say anything, yes, Galarian Zigzagoon is inspired by Kiss, so don't complain to me, I don't want to hear it! Zigzagoon is also going to need a little bit of nurturing before it can really take off, but on the bright side, it does get a new evolution in this game, and Linoon gets actually incredibly powerful once it learns Night Slash upon evolution. We also had a Poplio come out to audition all the way from the Alola region, and since he flew so far for this opportunity, how could we say no? Now, for those of you confused, Primarina is one of the usable Pokémon in this challenge, but this is where the tricky part comes in. The only legitimate way to get a Primarina in Sword and Shield is by going to the Isle of Armor and finding a hundred of the Alolan Diglets there, while originally picking Sobble as our starter. But if we did that, we'd miss out on Rillaboom, and I'm not missing out on the best Galarian starter, you can fight me on this. Plus, I made this a poll, and you all seemed to be pretty okay with me transferring over a Primarina and Ditto and breeding them, so this is gonna be the only exception to the rules for this challenge. BD took a bit of time, actually, but only really because our best option for him was our Zigzagoon, and it doesn't really have a lot of special attack, so Snarl doesn't really do too much, and sadly, Grookey doesn't learn knockoff to level 24 as a Thwacky. But we still came out on top thanks to some lucky critical hits, and Grookey also evolved into Thwacky shortly after winning. Rocking in Turfield proved to be actually a bit of a hassle, because Milo is pretty tricky, seeing as we don't really have anything for grass types at the moment. With a grass type of our own, a water type, and a normal dark type, we did have to go after Milo a few times. I got everybody to the level cap, and from that, Zigzagoon learned Pin Missile while evolving into Linoon, and Poplio evolved into Brion while also learning Icy Wind. I'm trying again, Gossifleur goes down to Pin Missile, which thankfully hit four times, and then we go for two more of them on Eldegoss, but sadly get taken out. I sent Thwacky out next, but all I could really go for is double hit, and while we did take out Eldegoss, it was painfully slow. <laughs> But patience is a virtue, and thanks to being patient, we rocked the house and got ourselves the grass badge. Our next band member is actually right next to Turfield, the Toxel at the daycare. And unlike my baby Pokemon run, we can actually use this one effectively now. Sadly, Toxel doesn't get any good moves until it evolves into Toxtricity at level 30, which we can't get until Stow on side because of the level cap that we're using, but it can shred on guitar and lay down a great bass line, so he's going to be a great addition to the team. Hullberry was really in the mood for some good music tonight, and it showed. Nessa was pretty easy, seeing as we had an Electric-type and a Grass-type on our team, but I was pretty on edge because I didn't want to go past the level cap, and we got pretty close. Toxel tried to take Goldeen down, but it didn't really see a lot of action, so we sent in Linoon to finish off Goldeen and Aracuda. We did a decent chunk of damage to Dreadnought with a Night Slash, but Linoon got taken down to a Max Geyser. Thwacky came out shortly after, taking it down with a few Razor Leaves. After obtaining the Water Badge, we can finally go and get our Sound Technician, a Noibat. I definitely thought Noibat would hold its ground a little bit more in this playthrough, but it got benched for a majority of this playthrough because it is so much weaker than I thought, and I only really used it in case I needed its flying coverage. But on the bright side, it is nice to finally have a Dragon type, especially this early in the playthrough. But like, look at this fight with Kabu. Granted, Ninetales is fully evolved and relatively tanky on the special side, but God, we did such minuscule damage here! Arcanine wasn't much better because he will-o-wisped Linoon, so this battle just was not going well in our favor, and we don't outspeed so we can't flinch, and due to the Intimidate and the burn, we do next to no damage. But after Arcanine eventually went down, Scorch basically eviscerated everything I had, since it's Max Flutterby, lowers Brion's special attack, meaning we do less damage with moves like Bubble Beam. We actually came really close to winning though, but sadly we ran out of usable Pokemon. On the second attempt, we led with Toxel and just kept on going for Acid to hopefully drop Ninetales' special defense. We actually did some pretty decent damage to it, allowing Linoon to come out and take it out with a Retaliate after Toxel fainted. Arcanine came out, and in order to avoid the Intimidate, I switched into Noibat and hit it with Air Cutters before we went down to Bites and Burn damage, which allowed Linoon to come out again 
and take out Arcanine with Retaliate. Center Scorch comes out last, and we send out Brion with Surf in its moveset, and I figured that we might be able to outspeed before it lowers our special attack, but we do not, and Surf does not do much more damage than Bubble Beam did, so we got taken down after getting one last hit with Aqua Jet in. I sent in Thwacky to hit it with a double hit, but Linoon came back in and got us the win with a few Retaliates. This move is so good in team challenges like this, I'm gonna be using it so much. After finishing our tour of the lower Gala region and getting the fire badge, I head over to Hammerlock but immediately come back to the wild area during blizzard weather in order to find ourselves a Mime Junior. Yes, this Pokemon is music inspired, or at least its Galarian line is, because tap dancing is a very rhythmic and percussive form of dancing, and I needed an excuse to use Mr. Rhyme because comedy music's a thing, and he's based off Charlie Chaplin, and I mean, who's gonna make the TikTok dances to our music? I- God, I don't know, don't question me. Before fighting B, I decided to evolve our Toxel and Mime Jr. It actually feels good to be able to use Toxtricity in a challenge run because Poison and Electric is a great typing, and its ability, Punk Rock, increases the power of sound moves like Boom Burst and its signature move, Overdrive. I was actually a bit hesitant on evolving Mime Jr. though, even though I decided to go through with it, but now we're getting rid of a Quad Resist for fighting moves and replacing it with a Neutrality, since Galarian Mr. Mime is an Ice and Psychic type. Well, it seems like maybe I should have stayed with Mime Jr. because we actually lost to B our first time as well. It was a mixture of being relatively lower leveled and also having super weak moves that did hit her super effectively but didn't do a lot of damage. Hit on top did some wicked damage to Brion and Noibat thanks to Retaliate, but Linoon, again, came to the rescue to take it down with a Retaliate. Pangoro's out next, but we just barely knocked it out with a Dazzling Gleam from Mr. Mime, and... Yet again, Linoon comes back out to kill it with Retaliate. You know what, for the for the rest of the video, anytime we send out Linoon, assume he's gonna go for Retaliate. Surfesh is out next, and I sent out Toxtricity to go for the Toxic Venoshock combo. We did some solid damage, but she did some bigger damage back thanks to a Swords Dance Brutal Swing. She wiped us out with her Gigantamax Machamp, though. We did not stand a chance. Before rematching, I decided to evolve Thwacky into Rillaboom and Brion into Primarina. Rillaboom is incredibly balanced and can take and deal damage really well. Plus, it's my favorite of the Galar starters, so being able to use it again is exciting. But I do want to say one thing. How hysterical would it be if they gave Rillaboom the grass rock typing because it's a, it's a rock drummer? Right? Like... That would have been funny! Primarina is also an incredible Pokemon to use, thanks to its incredible Water and Fairy type. It's a very bulky Pokemon, which I really enjoy using, and it can do some absolute work if you give it the right moves. It's a shame that it's very slow, though. Round 2 against B was our successful attempt, as you might imagine. We decided to start off with Toxtricity, and use the Toxic Venoshock strat against Hitmontop, since we can at least resist revenge. After a Shockwave, Hitmontop goes down. Pangoro's out next, and we decided to stay in and hit it with a Shockwave before sending out Mr. Mime, knowing that we can outspeed it and now take it down with a Dazzling Gleam. Surfesh comes out, and we decide to stay in and go for Psybeams, but she just goes for Swords Dance, wasting her turn. As we defeat it with another Psybeam, Machamp comes out, and we do some solid damage to it thanks to a lucky confusion from Psybeam, but Primarina came out and took Machamp down with a Sparkling Aria and an Aqua Jet. I'm not really going to bother talking about the Opal fight too much, because she was incredibly easy thanks to not only the quiz questions, but Mr. Mime, Toxtricity, and Primarina. Weezing went down to a few Psybeams, Mawal went down to a Sparkling Aria and an Aqua Jet, Togekiss went down to a few discharges, and Gigantamax Alcremie got a ton of damage dealt to it thanks to Toxic and Venoshock before taking Toxtricity down with a critical G-Max finale. Since Primarina is probably our bulkiest Pokemon, I decided to send it in and finish off the remainder of the fight, knocking out Alcremie with an Aqua Jet and Sparkling Aria. Right after fighting Opal, I completely forgot that we can evolve Linon at level 35 at nighttime because I always think it's level 42 for some reason. So I made sure to go do that and get ourselves an Obstagoon, which is such a sick design for a Pokemon. Like Rillaboom, Obstagoon is very well balanced, and its signature move, Obstruct, will be a great way for us to deal more damage to bulkier Pokemon like Hop's Snorlax. We also evolved Mr. Mime into Mr. Rhyme just before fighting Gordy. We're not really going to be using it for this fight, but I just wanted to have a Mr. Rhyme in my party for the longest time, man. I've wanted to use one for so long. We sadly lose out on the speed that Mr. Mime had, but Mr. Rhyme is a lot bulkier, 
but not like that says much considering that it's an ice type. We absolutely rocked the Sir Chester Gym. Get it? Gordy was an absolute sweep with Rillaboom until we got to his Gigantamax Colossal. We brought it to about half health thanks to high horsepower, but it lived a sparkling Aria, activating its steam engine ability, giving it plus three in speed whenever getting hit by a fire or water type move. And this made me really regret getting rid of Aqua Jet here. He did tons of damage to the rest of my team, but Obstagoon was thankfully able to survive a heat crash and avenge his fallen brethren. Now, I know that this game gives you three rivals, Hop, Beatty, and Marnie, but my real rival here is Piers. No matter how easy this challenge might seem, this fight here, it's personal. If anyone is gonna become the most recognizable musician in Galar, it's gonna be me. He starts off with a Scrafty, so I send out Primarina to take it out with a Draining Kiss. He sends out Malamar next, and I send out Obstagoon to defeat it with X-Scissor, and he then sends out his own Obstagoon, trying to one-up me like he wants to, but you know what? I believe in our Obstagoon. He can't possibly lose, right? I quit. I... I, I just don't care anymore. So after losing our mirror match, we send in Primarina to take it out with a Draining Kiss, and he ends off with Skuntank, and we take it out with Toxtricity's Overdrive. Now, true, we might have been victorious, but deep down, this run was not successful because we lost that mirror match. I am a terrible trainer, and I am a terrible musician for letting my Obstagoon down. But who cares? We have one more badge to win. Like Gordy, Raihan actually came really close to defeating us. He led off with Flygon and Gigalith, so I led off with Primarina and Rillaboom. Flygon hits us hard with a Thunder Punch, but we can take it down thanks to a Drum Beating and Icy Wind. He sends out Sandaconda next, and I should have taken this thing out as soon as possible, because all it did was protect and paralyze us with Glare, but for some reason, I decided to prioritize Gigalith first. After taking Gigalith down, he sends out his Gigantamax Duraludon. Now, I predicted the Protect from Sandaconda, so I focused all of my attacks on Duraludon. Primarina does get to get a Draining Kiss off, but Rillaboom was fully paralyzed, meaning we missed out on a ton of damage from high horsepower. After Primarina got paralyzed, I basically threw everything else at the field to see what stuck. Ultimately, everyone else fainted but Primarina and Noibat, so we were able to take down Sandaconda and Duraludon with an Icy Wind and Sparkling Aria. Now, I know I really don't talk a lot about the roots in this game, but good god, did I need to sneak around Route 10 Metal Gear Solid style to try and avoid as many trainers as possible. Now, if you guys remember, we've been maintaining a level cap in this challenge, so if any Pokemon gets above the level of the next upcoming Important Battles Ace, we can't use it. Our level cap for Raihan was level 48, but our level cap for whatever Marnie and Hops Aces are is both 49. So we're all either practically low 47 or halfway to 48, and I can't afford to box a bunch of my team members this late in the challenge. Seeing as Marnie's a dark type user, I did decide to box Primarina to prevent it from gaining too much experience, but once we got to Winden, I brought it back in. Oh, and Noibet evolved. Finally, Noivern is a massive upgrade to our firepower, seeing as it hits harder and is leagues faster than anything else on our team. I also went to get the TR for Flamethrower to give it some much needed coverage. It took a long time, but it feels really good to finally have my complete team. Before competing in the semifinals, I picked up the Choice Band, Specs, and Scarf, as well as the Expert Belt and Turf Field. Did anyone else know that this was here? Marnie was pretty easy, but it didn't exactly end the way I wanted it to. Obstagoon took out Lyperd with an X Scissor, Primarina took out Scrafty with a Draining Kiss, Noivern took out Toxicroak with an Air Slash, and Rillaboom took out both Morpeko and her Gigantamax Grimmsnarl. Now, I was kinda hoping that her Grimmsnarl would take Rillaboom out, but drum beating did a lot more than I thought it would, and unfortunately, Rillaboom went past the level cap. So right now, we're going into the hop fight and we're down a Pokemon, but hop was still pretty easy. Noivern was able to take out Dubwool and Pinkurchin thanks to Dragon Pulse. Toxtricity took out Corviknight with an Overdrive. Obstagoon almost got taken down due to Snorlax's Hammer Arm, but it missed the killing blow, allowing us to get one final hit in with Throat Chop. And Primarina was able to take out Inteleon, even though it was an incredibly time-consuming battle since he kept on raising his special defense with Max Quake, and we were just constantly healing with Drain and Kiss. With that victory, we now have a new level cap since Oleana's ace is 52, so Rillaboom is back on the team. Primarina took down Frostlass with Shadow Ball and upon leveling up, learned Moonblast, which is an incredible fairy type move, 
I just wish that we had it a little sooner. Noivern took down Serena, who I'd love to use on a challenge run sometime soon. Primarina took down Salazzle, thanks to Sparkling Aria. Toxtricity took down Milotic with Overdrive, and her Gigantamax Garboder went down thanks to Toxtricity and Rillaboom using High Horsepower. Next up is BD, and we start off with Noivern to take down Mawile with Flamethrower. Gardevoir is out next, and we send out Primarina to take it out with a few Shadow Balls, and we stay in as Rapidash takes us out with a Psycho Cut. Noivern took it out with an Air Slash as he sends out Gigantamax Hatterene. We sent in Rillaboom to use Woodhammer, and I was kind of worried about Hatterene, but then I completely forgot that it's incredibly slow. So after Rillaboom got taken out with a Max Flare, I sent in Toxtricity. We didn't entirely knock it out, but we did get a Lucky Poison thanks to Sludge Bomb, so that took it down as Toxtricity went down to a Max Mind Storm. The Gym Leader rematches were also really easy, so I'm just going to speed through this. Nessa was taken care of thanks to Rillaboom and Toxtricity, although I accidentally sent out Obstagoon first as she let off with Galizapod, so not the best start, but she was still very easy. B was basically a sweep thanks to Mr. Rhyme and the Choice Scarf and Psychic, but after it got taken out by her Gigantamax Machamp, Primarina came out and took it out with a Moon Blast. Raihan took a little bit of maneuvering, but we took out Torkoal with Obstagoon using Stomping Tantrum. Sturtinator came out next and took us out with Shell Trap, but we sent in Noivern to take it out with a Dragon Pulse. Flygon and Gudra both went down to some Moon Blasts from Primarina as he takes us down with his Gigantamax Duraludon. We're able to hit it with a Moon Blast beforehand, which allowed Noivern to come out and take it down with a Dragon Pulse. Now that we actually have a Noivern, it's actually carrying the team a ton. It's one of my favorite team members that we're using right now. Now that the finals are over, Rose decides to bring about the darkest days so that he can prevent it a thousand years in the future because he's totally going to live to see that happen again, right? Regardless, Noivern came in and basically swept his entire team with Flamethrower. But we got taken pretty low due to his Kling Clang living a hit, as well as taking damage from the Life Orb that we found in the Slumbering Wield. Noivern got taken down by his Gigantamax Caparaja, so Rillaboom came out and took it down with some high horsepowers. Sadly, Leon can't be defeated with the Ted Danson sweep that I know and love so much, but I decided to try fighting him at the level we were at, and it actually came pretty close. He led off with Aegislash, and I led off with Noivern to take it down with some flamethrowers. He lives the first hit since he's in shield form, but after living a Shadow Ball, we can take it out with one more. His Haxorus actually outsped us, killing us with Outrage, but since he's stuck in that move now, I have a free opportunity to switch into Primarina since it's immune to dragon moves. We take Haxorus out with a Moon Blast as Dragapult comes out. I switched into Obstagoon to take it out with a few Throat Chops, but we unfortunately got paralyzed due to Dragon Breath, which is really unlucky for us. We thankfully didn't get fully paralyzed while Dragapult was out, but Leon sends in his Seismitoad next, so we send in Rillaboom to take it out with a drum beating, and then he follows it up with Cinderace. Now, I was going to use Toxtricity and then go for Shift Gear to be able to outspeed Cinderace and Charizard with Overdrive, but Pyro Ball literally took us to 1 HP, and then he took us out with a Quick Attack. Great! We sent out Primarina, but it hit us decently hard with Acrobatics as we took it down with a Sparkling Aria. Out comes his Ace, Gigantamax Machamp, and to stall out his Gigantamax turns, I sent out Obstagoon, Rillaboom, and Mr. Rhyme to all take the fall. Once Charizard lost its Gigantamax form, we sent in Primarina one last time, who unfortunately got hit by an Ancient Power, but we hit back very hard with a Sparkling Aria, winning us the run. So yeah, th this run wasn't very challenging, but we did have a few losses that I genuinely did not expect. But it was a ton of fun to do because I got to use a bunch of Pokemon that I've never used before, like Obstagoon, Mr. Rhyme, and Noivern. And there are tons of other Pokemon that you can use in this too, like Wigglytuff, Maractus, Exploud. There's a lot of versatility here. We did hit a few hurdles here and there, but the thing that really kept me the most tense was that level cap. I had to skip a ton of trainers in this game just to keep everyone under the level cap, and putting party members in the box to prevent potential overleveling made battling some battles pretty intense. But I was happy with the relatively balanced team we had, and I strongly recommend trying out this run if you're looking for something not too challenging. If you guys liked this run, be sure to like the video, comment who you would use in this kind of challenge run, and then be sure to follow me on Twitch, where I'll be doing challenge runs until Scarlet and Violet come out, and then we'll be doing challenge runs in those games. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. But, real talk, this win was not actually successful because our Obstacoon lost to Pierce's.